believe that God has a word. I tell you, um, it's funny because like today, <laughs> you know, I've been praying some certain prayers and that doggone joker popped, it, popped his doggone head up, man, first thing this morning when I got to work. And uh, I have to say that I did not handle that situation very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so so but it was cool because it's like it's it's like this well let me let me pray first and then before I get into it because I know my mind's going to soar so let me pray first father in the name of Jesus thank you for this day Lord I thank you Lord for this opportunity Lord please be with pastor and the family father please cover them in the blood of Jesus father and and Lord we're, we're so comforted by the fact that our sister knows you Jesus so when she passes from this life, she's gonna, you're going to be the first person she sees, Lord. And I know she's going to give you a great big hug. And Lord, tell her, give her a hug for me too, you know, and the rest of us, you know. And, uh, and then for uh, my sister, her father, and, and the hernia surgery, Lord, we're already decreeing and we're declaring that he's going to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you can supernaturally touch his body right now. But Lord, if you choose to use doctors, that's cool too. Give the doctors the precise uh, and the precision that they need, Lord, so that they can remove whatever they have to remove and that my brother can recover speedily, Lord. And we decree and we declare that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let our hearts and our minds and let us be open father god hear the word of the lord lord all me included lord and may we not just be hearers but let's be doers of the word father god in jesus name amen amen, amen. so now back to it so so what i'm excited about is the kingdom the kingdom of god is so it's 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 a mystery but it's unique at the same time because it's almost like for me uh, when we were singing that song I'm, I'm like a kid and and i'm and i'm looking for something you know when a kid is looking for what what, what mama where, 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 where's my toy well you you got it in that closet somewhere just go in the closet and look for it so that joke was, and, and i remember being as a kid looking for something you know and i would dig all till i found what i was looking for and that's the same thing with the kingdom and what i love about the kingdom of god is 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 the power of its presence. Yes. Mm. The, the presence of the kingdom is something else, mom. That thing is something else. And what I love about it is, I, 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 if, I, if you just kind of sit back and watch how it works, it's, it's something, sister. Yeah. It's, it's real, I'm telling you, it's, it's something. I, I, I mean, I'm like just sitting, and it's almost like an outer body experience. I'm not trying to be freaky, but I'm just saying it's, it's almost like an out of body experience. Yesterday, uh, and, and bless Justine them, uh, you know, I was trying to get my hair fixed. Y'all know me in this hair, you know, so on and so forth, brothers in the hair. So I needed to get my hair fixed. So I went up to the sister's place and, and got my hair. And, and I can just tell that as soon as I stepped into the house, that whole atmosphere just changed. And not, it's not me. But it's what's inside me. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? And I could tell that the sister was getting uncomfortable. And, and when she first called me, I said, well, look, I, I just want to make sure, you know, because you don't know me, I don't know you. And I just want to make sure that you're comfortable, you know, being male, female, so on and so forth. And I, and I didn't know who was at her crib, you know, so on and so forth. But, I, but she has a... Um, a boyfriend and all that and she's a real nice sister really cool whatever you know what I'm saying but I can just tell that the atmosphere of God's presence was doing something because I can I can sense her reaction to it well you know uh, you know all, all them bottles up there you know that ain't mine you know I, I mean I don't drink all them you know what I'm, and I mean just st saying stuff and I'm not even saying nothing I, I never said I never said one word, you, you know, just it, that's just, you know, and, and those type of things started happening. So and, and I'm sitting back and I'm just like, wow, Lord, your kingdom is something else because it's not me. You know, it's the king that's in the kid, you know, 
And then, so, so, so that was kind of the good side of it. <laughs> so now let me talk about the bad side of it and about my day this morning. So uh, I had a little situation, you know, and, uh, and, 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 I, and I made eye contact with, with one of the cats and I gave him a sign to do something for me, you know, and, and I wanted it done. And, and I felt like the dude just totally dis. He looked like right at me and just like that. And I said, no, this joker didn't do me like that. So you know what I did? I slammed my car into gear, and because I, I, I was expecting him to move the truck for me. And, and I know that he knew what I was talking about, because I mean, we worked together, so he knew what I was talking about, and he deliberately ignored me. Whoa, Mama Missy, whoa, I was not the smiley face Willie that you used to. I got out my car, I slammed that joker in gear, I got out the car, and I moved the truck myself. And then one of the other boss kids, oh, I got, I, I said, I got it. So I went and I moved it myself, and I said, okay, Willie, now, you're saying that you're a kingdom man, and that you're full of the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost, and the Word, where is it? What was that? And I can tell the difference. I was completely disconnected at that point from God. And I can tell the difference. I was miserable. I was, of course, all y'all know I was fiery hot, you know. And I just had to come, and I had to speak to my, and I said, okay, Lord, I, I get it. I get it, Papa. Please forgive. But then the enemy but see, what I did was at that point in time, when I, when I opened that door, the enemy immediately took advantage of it. And immediately he started putting thoughts in my mind about if that joker say something to you, this is what you're going to do. You, you know, and when I'm at that point, that's too far. That's not the kingdom of God. That's not what I represent. That's not what I'm all about. But I know I'm still human, and I'm, I, I mean, I understand all that. But it's my desire, just like the song said, if it's my desire and if I choose to worship, then I'm choosing to make sure that the kingdom is first and foremost in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as Christians, that is key. Because that which you walk in is what you're going to display. Hallelujah. So, Frank, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ringing just a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, so, so yeah, so, so, so now, so I'm back, now I'm having to backtrack. Lord, I'm sorry. I made a fool in front, of, in front of myself. I made a fool in front of you. I made a fool in front of all these people. And, and they're wondering what, and nobody knows what's going on. They're, all they know, this dude just slammed this car in gear and moved the truck with a nasty attitude. They don't know what's going on. And of course, you know, the one that's involved in it, he's not going to, well, don't, y'all please excuse Willie because, you know, I was, I, I should have moved the truck for the dude, but, you know, I just ignored him and that's why he's hot. Of course he's going to say that. No. <laughs> yeah. No, he's going to leave it. So, 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 so watch this. So my dude, so my boss got in the truck and everybody jumped in the truck with him and said, well, you just drive in the truck. So I'm driving in the truck all by myself. Nobody want to ride with me. But that, but that was God. That's cool, but that was God. That was cool, but that was God. Because between where I started, like leaving the office, and then when I ended up, you know, by the time I, and then the Lord, the Holy Spirit is doing some serious, Michael, you better go down there and get Willie. <laughs> I can see him now, because he, know, he knows me. He knows, he knows how I get, you know, and, and I mean, and I was there. I mean, I don't normally get like that, but I was there, you know, in that zone, you know what I'm saying? And I hate being like that, but, um, but, but, but he said, man, we got to do a quick work. Let's work on him now. But the blessing of it was, thank God I prayed before I left the house. 
So watch this. So what I prayed was already at work, even though the Lord knew that the devil was going to try to come and intersect my prayer by setting up this sorry situation. Because of my prayer, he was able to send the word back to me when I needed it most. So when you get in a situation, church, just remember, my prayers are active. Your prayers are active and they're moving in the heavenlies. Amen. And even like my man said, when it comes to my finances, Lord, you promised to supply all my needs. See that all that is up there, up there. But what the devil going to do is he going to try to set you up and put you in a situation to make you think or respond or think and respond and watch this and speak. Think, respond, speak. Watch this. So I had to tell myself, don't say that. I had to literally say, even though it might have been here and my body was reacting to what I was thinking because I was getting jacked up. But I said, but don't say that. I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't say that because now you're giving him permission to set up the situation. That's why you got to watch what you say and you got to watch what you think. It's, It's natural sometimes to respond, but it's how you respond. True. Amen. It is how you respond. And we know the enemy's going to constantly be attacking this thing. But what you say is key because now you've given him the permission to say, see, he just said it. So now let's set it up. So I had to literally, literally, sister, say, don't say that. And, I, I, and, 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 and again, by the time I got to the job site, I could, <laughs> I could feel how the Lord was working on my heart that quickly, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I can sense like, the, the connect the connection is right, 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 right. you know because it's kind of he, he help him Michael <laughs> help him Michael you know but he did it and that that was the power of the kingdom the power of the prayer, the power of the kingdom, because God knows my heart. He knows our hearts and our desires. Amen. And, and, and I know that what I saw just the day before and then what I'm seeing right now is light and darkness, two contradictory atmospheres. But yet the kingdom, God worked the kingdom in both of the situations. And watch this. By the end of the day, because of what I determined to do, Watch how God worked. So at the end of the day, we had two more jobs left to do. And the boss walked up to me and he said, "Uh, yeah, so we're going to switch. You know, we're going to move some stuff around. And I want you, you and the dude to ride in the same truck. Watch God. Now, this, this is God. I mean, I couldn't. I didn't plan that, sis. So now I'm in the truck, the dude's sitting right there, you know, <laughs> and I can feel that disconnect coming again, you know, that I, I, this is real, right? Because that, that's how it is, isn't it? I can feel myself disconnecting, you know, that disconnected because now these thoughts are starting to flood my mind. Well, if he says something, I'm going I'm to I'm get, you know, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I, I'm like, look. And then I had to get a grip on my mind. I had to get a grip, man, (laughs) you know. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not the kingdom. This is not the way. And then I kept thinking, what about eternity? Is your getting your way or, or, or satisfying your flesh more important than the kingdom? No way. No way. And so I, so I, so, so, so I, I didn't say nothing. I ain't looked at the dude. I just kept driving straight, right? 
and, and he was doing likewise. And he was trying to fall over the gate. You know, we're both in there. And he's trying to scoot as close to that window, you know. <laughs> he tried. You, you can only go so far, but he's scooting over there, you know. And, and I'm just kind of over my side, you know. And I turn on the radio and I'm bebopping, whatever, you know. Just trying to, to, to plug it out. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, so we go, we go to the job site. And I didn't know where I was going. So he kind of like, and I knew what he meant because, you know, he just kind of talks. And I said, okay, cool. And I said, well, good, 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 good. And, and so, and then, and then he turned the radio down and he was giving me instructions on what we're going to do. The next. So, so, so what I did was I said, yes, sir. I treated him with the utmost respect at that point. Nothing but the Holy Ghost because I didn't think yes sir and treat him with respect it was just what flowed out of me and before the end of the day y'all know how we do it we smiling we joking and we carrying on and we never said sorry to one another it was just that that guy thing you know that's that written thing you know that you know we we good we we cool we cool we cool because I kept saying to my, I said, Lord, you know, I ain't got no beef with this dude. I mean, he's a good guy, you know, I mean, you know, but I said, but, you know, we just got to keep it real. I want to keep it real. You know, if I'm upset at you, I'm going to tell you I'm upset at you. If you're upset at me, tell me you're upset at me and let's handle this like gentlemen, like men, you know. And like I said, by the end of the day, he was he was cool. We're cool. And I felt that. And there goes the kingdom again in operation. How beautiful. I, I'm telling you, I can't express it to you, man. Just how awesome that is to me, you know, to see how God just can work in a situation like that. But but the thing about it is, folks. Are we always kingdom minded like that? No condemnation. I'm not I'm not pointing because I, I, I wasn't this morning. I was I could I could have cared less about the king, the kingdom, Jesus, the red horse, white horse, black horse, all him coming back. I, 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 I really that was the furthest from my mind. I, I, you know, Lord, if Jesus would have came back right then, I, I don't know what would have happened, but I was not thinking Jesus. Ma. You know what I'm saying? I was far from from Jesus on my mind. But the, it's so important because people don't understand the kingdom and truth, like Pastor said, because people have that innate God whole shape, God shape hold in their hearts and that desire, natural desire to know God, even though they don't know God, it's important for us to show them God. Because once they show them God, then that's going to give them an aspect of knowing God. Amen. So I'm just priming the pump, priming the pump. So 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 I read this uh, particular and, 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 and I also want to comment real quick on what Michelle talked about, because she was talking about dimensions, you know, and I read in the devotional that one of the dimensions and I and I loved it. It was so cool that one of the dimensions is being in the dimension of God's presence. See, that, that all in itself is so precious because Mama Missy, when I, when I was all upset and mad and, and I felt so disconnected from God and I felt sick and I was shaking. My body was, sh I felt so sick and I'm like, how could I, but thank God for his grace the mercy, that word that I prayed right before I left my house and he sent it right on time. So thank God for this. But, uh, but, but that, you know, again, the dimension of being in God's presence, but this, that was one thing that was stirring me, but this is another thing that got me. So let me read this to you real quick and then we're going to get into the word. Amen. I'm, I, this, I'm just going to tell you this now and I, and I meant that I thought pastor was going to be here. Rick, can you put that picture up on the board, please? Thanks, Pop. Well, while he's doing that, let me let me let me go ahead and read this. Okay. 
Okay, Michelle, Michelle, will, Michelle will hook it up. Okay, so um, I read this and this thing just blew me out the water. It's called the depth of worship, depth of worship. A Muslim woman was traveling by herself on an airline flight, and Misty might be familiar with this one because it's in this little book that she gave me. So a Muslim woman was traveling by herself on an airline flight and had, uh, had a Middle East, I had a middle seat uh, and, okay, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let me calm down. Y'all know I get so, I get so excited. I'm just trying to, but let me calm down, especially when I read. Okay. A Muslim woman was traveling by herself on an airline flight, had a middle seat with a man she did not know on the other side and me on the other. Recognizing her discomfort in sitting next to the man she did not know, I offered to trade seats. She gladly accepted and we switched. That kindness towards her opened a door to a long in-flight conversation. We, when she learned that I was traveling in order to do some Christian ministry, watch this, she said, I used to be a Christian. She explained that she grew up in a home believing in Jesus, but converted to Islam as an adult. Christian, watch this, Christianity doesn't go far enough, she said. She told me that Muslims take their faith seriously. Her perspective that those around her who believed in Jesus Christ were not serious enough grieves me. We, like Moses, who know the Lord and have received his compassion and grace, have reason to respond in meaningful ways to our loving God. These become outward expressions of faith. It isn't that Christianity doesn't go far enough, true. We, like Moses, live in the presence, we live in the presence of holy God, Lord Almighty and sincere worship honors God, but also expresses the depth of our faith, okay? But the part that got me, she said that Christians don't take their faith serious enough and that Christianity doesn't go far enough. Let's think about that now. Let, well, I'm not gonna rush this. I want us to really think about what, she, what, what she said Growing up in a Christian home and to make those two powerful comments that Christianity doesn't go faith far enough and that Christians don't take their faith serious. So what did she see in her own home that would make her leave the God of the universe? The God who created the stars and the moon. The God who raises the dead back to life and open up blind eyes. So I would have to question then how serious was her parents? And the people that she went to church with. So as I started reading the word. I came up as the God would begin to deal with me that there are people who really need to step, Christians who really need to step into the water. And that's the title of my sermon today. Step into the water. And as a matter of fact, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, this is a series it's a five part series. I've already got it laid out. I mean, the Lord already gave me all the time. I mean, it was just like flowing. I mean, it just hit me like that. But it's high time that we step into the water, because if we're saying that we're kingdom people and we're saying that we're kingdom minded and we're saying that we love the king, then 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 that should indicate that if you're if we're saying these things, church, then we ought to be making an impact. Right. 
We ought to be making a serious impact because just as what I experienced when I walked into this gal's house and the presence of God hit her house, something changed that atmosphere, y'all. Now, I didn't go in there praying, Lord, change the atmosphere. I didn't pray anything. I'm just saying, man, I'm just here to get my hair fixed. <laughs> Amen. But what, what, what was going on in that atmosphere and when I stepped into it, that thing changed. That's operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, y'all. And I'm not saying it's me. I'm just saying that's, but that's all of us. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's normal Christianity. That's normal Christianity. But watch this. If I'm not stepping into the water and getting in the depths of his presence, then I'm never going to experience his power. I'm not going to experience his presence. I'm not going to experience anything but just like this sister right here, just getting my feet wet. And there's a lot of Christians in the church and all they're doing is they're just getting their feet wet. When the Bible commands us to step into the water. Hallelujah. Now we're going somewhere with this, y'all. I mean, I'm I'm so excited about this thing. And and I'm just like, man, Lord, to grace me to. uh, Lord is just too good. So y'all have heard me say. Especially when it comes to the kingdom. And please, I'm not trying to push off any books. You know, I know we all got 15 million books. I got 20 million books I'm talking about trying to read. But but I I just wanted to break out this one. And I broke it out before. If you don't understand the kingdom, it's okay. That's why God has given us generals in the faith. Men and women of God who can explain it so that we can understand it and operate in it. I've read this book. I don't know how many times, but this is Rediscovering the Kingdom by the late great Dr. Miles Monroe. Y'all know I got to meet him one time. Oh, man, I was so nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you because I'm like, oh, man, that's a general right there. You know, I mean, my knees was not I was I, my knees was knocking brother. Will. I said, I know he's a man. I know. But this is a general. And you can just like, you know, but anyways, but he was real cool. He's, you know, in that Bahamian. What's up, man? You know, he's the Bahamian. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, he cool like that. OK, that's cool. So, hey, what's up, man? So, OK, but watch this. This is what he says. Please listen. The concept of kingdom is critical. It's essential. It's necessary. It's required and it's imperative in order to understand, appreciate and comprehend the purpose, intent, goal and objectives of God and man's kind's relationship to him and the creation. So operating in the kingdom mindset and in the principles that God has given us, it is critical. That is not up for option. Because you're carrying, we're carrying something that's going to change the world. And I know it's easy because, you know, we can get that here. But is my lifestyle, I'm speaking to myself, it didn't show it this morning, but is my lifestyle reflecting what's on the inside of me? Am I really reflecting the king? Hallelujah. And so 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 that's why he started stirring my heart and saying, son, I'm calling my church. I'm calling my people to step out and step in to that water. Hallelujah. Let me get I'm going to give you some examples right here. Papa Rick. Oh, this is this is this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now. Uh, let's let's start with this one first. Okay, thank you, Lord. Okay, R- Papa Rick, can you turn to Matthew 14? If you got your Bibles or your phones or however we do it, Matthew 14. And and I and I really hope and I really hope and pray 
that y'all are just sensing. Just I'm trying to reveal my heart here as God has revealed his heart to me. Amen. I'm really trying to just lay it out there. OK, so Matthew 14 and uh, and let's start with verse 22. Matthew 14 and 22. Everybody there? You ready? OK, here we go. Uh, then he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Somebody say other side. Before we, he, he directed them to go to the other side, watch this. He directed the disciples to get into the boat. Let me work that. Now, uh, being that, you know, glory to God, going to Jerusalem and uh, going to Israel and, and seeing all these different things, you know, and especially at the Sea of Galilee, you know, they had to always cross that thing from one end to the other, you know. And so here, when Jesus is saying, look, disciples, I'm telling you right now, make, get into the boat and I want you all to go into the other side. But the first thing is they had to follow his directive and get into the boat. But watch this. Before you get into the boat, especially in that era, you had to step into the water. OK, you had to step into the water and then get on the vessel that's going to take you out deeper. OK, now watch this just prior to thank you, Lord, just prior to this event, 5000 men, not even including the women, were just fed miraculously. So watch the he's trying to teach his boys king the kingdom and how the kingdom operates. So he just showed them a great miracle. Now, how many of us have seen miracle after miracle after miracle, sign and wonder, and then the Lord's trying to direct us. I'm directing you to get into that boat, step into that water, get into that boat, and go on the other side in your faith. Hallelujah. Is this, make, is this, is this helping anybody? Is this good? Okay, okay, okay. So, so they just got through seeing this powerful, powerful signs and wonders, you know. And, and so he directed them to get into the boat. So they stepped into the water and they willingly got into the vessel. And they went on the other side. Now let's pick it up. So he directed the disciples to get into the boat, to go before him to the other side. And while he, while he sent away the crowds. After he had dismissed the multitudes, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was still there alone. Watch this, verse 24. Everybody say, but? But the boat was by this time out on the sea. Many furlongs, a furlong is about one eighth of a mile, distant from the land, beaten and tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against them. Mm. The wind was against them. See, a lot of times folk are afraid to go out because they're afraid of what's going to come against them. That's right. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trials and tribulations but be of good cheer because I've overcome. But he still told you to go. So you got to really think in your own heart, am I really going like Jesus told me to go? Am I willing to put my foot into the water, get on the boat, knowing that there could be a tornado? There could be a hurricane out there. Of course, he didn't tell them that, and I'm sure they might not have been thinking that. But, you know, since we already know the story, let's think about it. And are we still willing to go if we're willing, if, if those things come against us? Because the wind is going to come against you. And, if, and see, that's why, see, that's why, put that picture back up, Rick, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, watch this. See, if all I want to do is just walk along the beach and oh, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And just just dance around and get your feet wet. But you know what? Some Christians are OK with that. And they never experience the miraculous power of being in that fifth dimension 
which is the presence, living in the presence and, and, and manifesting and operating in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some people are just okay with that. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, getting, my, I ain't getting wet. I, I'm, I'm good. All I know is I got my Jesus, I'm walking on the beach, and when I die, I go to heaven. And see, you don't realize that that mentality and those type of thoughts and living that lifestyle is opening the door for Satan. Because, oh, Satan loves Christians. He's cool with you just coming to church. He's cool with you just doing your, your, your little Christian. He's cool with all that. But just stay on the beach. Don't get into the boat. You just stay right there on the beach. And, I, I, and, and watch that. He said, I'll even sing with you. I'll, I'll, I'll walk on the, in the water with you. Come on. He, he, you know? He's, he's cool with that. But in this hour, and if we're talking revival, and if we're talking the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and if we're talking about wanting to see signs and wonders and miracles, you better get your butt on that boat and get out in that water. You better get yourself off that beach. You better take it to another level. Hallelujah. And not worry about what's going to come against you. And you're talking to one that knows by experience about what comes against you. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm an expert. <laughs> but see, but watch this. But watch this, like the brother said, there was one time when you were sitting there all depressed and, and down in the dumps and, and all of that. But he said, I choose to worship, hallelujah. And when you choose to worship and when you have made up your mind that I don't care if it's Hurricane Katrina, I don't care if it's a tornado, I don't care if it's a water spout, I don't care if it's a witch, I don't care if it's a warlock, I don't care if it's the police, I don't care if it's the army, I'm going to represent the king and his kingdom. I've made up my mind, I'm going. Because I got all eternity coming after that, baby. So I win. We win. Hold up. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, go, go. Hold up. Real quick, White, because you know how I like to look up the meaning of words. Verse 24, if you'll bring that back up real quick, where it says wind. Mm hmm beaten and tossed by the waves for the wind mm -hmm. was against them. Mm -hmm. That word wind means the four corners of the earth. Mm. The four corners of the earth sure, yeah. were against them. Mm. It also, the root meaning is forceful respiration, breathing hard, mm -hmm. reduction of temperature, chilled, waxed cold. Mm-hmm. Mm we got to breathe a little heavier if we're going to work. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so powerful, powerful. Thank you, sis. Powerful. So, 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 so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, there, there, there is a, thank you, Holy Ghost. There is a cost to being a kingdom man or woman of God. There is a cost and you have to decide, am I willing to get off that beach Put my foot into the water and get on that boat and do what the Lord has told me to do. Or you want to stay shackled on the beach, shackled in the shallow water, being a shallow Christian, a shallow person, shallow, shallow, shallow your whole life. Not me. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not Willie Tillman. Uh-uh. 
I'm going to fight that joker till I, till I lose my last breath, Will. I'm telling you, I'm going to swing. I'm going to swing my sword. I'm going to swing that word. And I'm going to let that joker know. You, 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 you know what? Just like the sons of Sceva. You know, uh, I, 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 Paul I know. And Jesus I know. And Willie I know. But who are you? <laughs> Yo, but there's a price to that, people. There is a price to pay. And you got to be willing to pay that price. No matter what. And are you tough enough to take it? Sometimes you just got to be tough in the, in the spirit. The kingdom of violence suffers violence, but it's the violent that take it back by force. And, I, I, and, and, and see, th and see all these different things, the enemy can't, st he can't stand what's happening right now because he's, he's just, oh my goodness, he's talking that kingdom stuff again. Oh my goodness, he's, he's speaking faith again. Oh my goodness, he's, he's speaking stuff into the atmosphere and unleashing the angels again. What is he, oh, I thought we had him this morning. I thought we had the boy this morning. What happened, guys? What did y'all do? <laughs> Made it worse. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, because uh, there, uh, uh, thank you, Lord. There's, there's so many different types of ministers and ministries that are out there, y'all. And if we just... OK, let me finish that. Thank you, Lord. OK, let me finish this one first, Lord, please. Because <laughs> stuff just is, there's so many. And if we just stop and just look at the television, we're so blessed. We can turn on the TV and see what God is doing. And you're not moved by that. And I tell you, and there's certain people that I love to watch, you know, because I get an impartation. I'd be receiving from, I say, Lord, I take it. I take it. When they start speaking blessed, I take it. I take it. I take it. Because there's some cats that are just operating in realms of the Holy Ghost that it, it's frightening to me because I don't understand how that operates, how that works. But they work in it. And you're talking about constant signs and wonders and miracles and people getting saved and the power of God just falling all over the place but you know what what I find out about about people too and I mean both Christian non-Christian so many people are small-minded yeah. oh <laughs> so many people are small-minded wait a minute the Christians ought to be the last people to be small-minded but you know why we're so small-minded because we're jealous of one another we're envious of one another we're talking about one another we don't support one another we say we love each other but that's just a smile and a grin and it's not really from the heart and that's why we're small-minded and that's why Satan keeps us all in this little corner and keeps us shoved there and say y'all stay right there and keep fighting and bickering and carrying on. And the word says, be careful, because if, if you keep arguing against one another, you're biting and you're going to devour one another. So see, see, he don't need the storm and the wind and the hurricanes and all that. He's just going to use you. Word? We got to stop this. We, that, and that, and, oh, that's why Paul's, come on, guys, this thing is real, y'all. We, when we get to the kingdom, when we get to heaven, our minds are already going to be blown. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But why can't we have heaven on earth and let our minds be blown, but blown so other people's minds at the same time? Yeah, bro, sister, my mind is blown. But you know what? This going to blow your mind. Be healed in Jesus' name and start laying hands on folks. Start casting out devils, raising the dead, Brother Willie. Watch them blind eyes open. And if we're talking about we're going to do this, then either we are or are not. But when the ones that do want it go on, don't you sit there and frown your mouth and get nasty about it. Because God's going to move those that want to go. He's going to move them on. 
And he don't care what tornado, hurricane, breeze, Facebook, Twitter, all social media. He, that don't control God. And if you got a man or a woman that's filled with the spirit of God, you think that that's going to stop them? That's going to stop the power of God from moving and operating in the earth? No. That's small minded. That's, right. that's, right. that's a small mind. And shame on us if we're living like that and thinking like that towards one another and doing everything that we can to choke off the move of God. Shame. And you're going to have to and we're going to have to and I'm going to have to give an account for that. But you know what? See, but see, that don't bother us because we rather deal with God than deal with one another. We see we think we got we think that God is so gracious and oh, he's so loving and, and, and he's so kind. You know, you know, it's God. I'm not making fun. You know, y'all know me. I'm not saying anything about anybody. I'm just saying that's just an example. Because I know some people express themselves like that, and I love that. You know what I'm saying? So, we have to decide what we're going to do in this house and clean it up. Amen. Because watch this. If, if, if the masses come through the front door, and Jesus said this to them boys, Watch that, oh Lord, you sure about that? <laughs> the masses come, right? And let's say this place is packed with people, amen? Are they going to leave here more kingdom-minded or are they going to be made more of a devil and a demon when they come into this house? Because of the way we live in. And then watch this, watch this, watch this. And then we want to say, oh, well, let's, let's do an outreach and let's reach out to the community and let's do this and let's do that. When you think that community ain't watching what you're doing, ain't watching what we're doing, but what you're doing is more important than the kingdom and what you're doing is more important than people's souls and what you're, more, what you're doing is more important than heaven and you want to send people to hell. While you on your way to heaven, you sending everybody else to hell. Because that's more important, right? Mm -hmm. That's in essence what we say. See, my little attitude and, and my, you know, he disrespect, he disrespecting me. I'll move the truck, I'll move the dog on truck myself. So Willie, that's more important than these brothers watching you that don't even know the language and they're saying, this dude's a Christian? That's Christianity? I don't want no part of that. I, I don't want nothing to do with that. That's why it's so important, people, to live habitually in his presence. So at least when we do mess up, yeah, we always fall back, you know, on so on. But then, you know, it's more than just saying, I'm sorry. You got to change and let the word change you. If you're going to be a kingdom citizen and you're going to be a word man or a word person or spirit filled and, 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 and letting God do great things through you, there's some things that you just got to cut away. And you know what? And, and, and here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Out of all the people, think, think about all the hurt that's going on in the world, y'all. Think about the, just the turmoil and the chaos that is out there. And they, whether they're right or wrong, in the house of God and among God's people is the last place they expect that. To see it and to be involved in it. And see, see, and, and these were the things I truly believe that Jesus was trying to instill in these disciples because they were raw. They were just like street cats, you know what I'm saying? Hood cats. Rough. Look at Peter. Boy, that cat will cut your ear off if you mess with him. I mean, pull out a switchblade on you, man. Yo, yo, man, I mean, I'm just, you know, Jesus love you, bro. Come on, man. Put the, put the blade up, dude. 
You know, it's, 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 I'm just trying to convey the seriousness of, of, of what we're saying. You know, certain things, you know, certain things and areas in life we can get involved in and, and, and people will say, well, you know, you're not, you're not valid. You know, people might look at me and say, you're not valid to, to represent. And I said, you know what? You are right. That's why I get myself out the way and let Jesus stand forward. Amen. And that's the one that's going to do all the validating. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show that picture again, Rick, please. Look at that. Let's, let's, let's look at that. She just chilling. And, and I mean, that, that's a nice thing. That's cool. But that ain't the gaps of it. And think about going and getting into heaven. And, and again, I know our minds are going to be blown. But the Lord got to say, y'all done heard all this word, done seen all, y'all had it. Think about it. We got more than what the disciples had. We've got a lot more, but doing a lot less. Because we're running after things and not running after the king. We're running after things. We got to have things, 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 things. Well, what about the king, 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 king and his kingdom and people's souls are at stake? If, if, if they die, they're going their way to hell, the place of eternal torment, folks. We can't expect people and to try to deliver people from hell when we're acting like it ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, look, boys, I just showed you the miracle. Y'all just seen 5000 people be fed, not even including the women and the children. Now, get on that boat, put your foot in that water, get on that boat and go to the other side like I've told you. Whew, boy. Okay, give me a couple more minutes. I know, Lord, have mercy. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's go to verse 25. Everybody with me? Everybody, we cool? Yes. Okay. Y'all know I love y'all, right? Come on, man. Y'all y'all, y'all know, y'all know. I, I just, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just telling you like the Lord put it in my heart, man. I mean, you know, and, and, I'm, 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 and let me tell you how I know this is God. Because normally, <laughs> and Missy knows, and a lot of y'all know, I normally have notes on top of notes on top of notes on top of notes. But the Lord told me I got this. I have no notes up here. Just, just my Bible. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm just I'm just telling you what the Lord is telling me. I'm just that's all I'm trying to convey. I'm in the same boat, the same boat. Don't let that joker and the devil try to tell you anything different. that He think he all that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. OK, let's look at verse 25. And in the fourth watch between three and six a.m. of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. Whew. Man. You know what, what's so good about these messages? We can be in the crust of whatever, whether it be sin, whether it be what, whatever it is. Jesus is always going to come to us. Always. Amen. It don't matter. I mean, look at these guys are in the middle of the sea. It's rocking and reeling and carrying on. And Jesus said, let me let me go. Let me go see what my boys are up to. And just like he did with me, please, let me let me get down here and, and help this boy straighten up his attitude. What are you doing, son? Lord, is that you? <laughs> Yes, it's me. What are you doing? 
Oh, man, well, you, you know, Lord, you, <laughs> then I'm trying to get ghetto on him. You know what I'm saying, Lord? You know, how, you, know how, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get ghetto on him, sis. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Skip the ebonics, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're not doing right right about now, bro. I just showed you some, I just showed you the miracle. What I did was I set this up so that I can send you into the depths of the sea to see how you're going to respond and look at you. Didn't you just see? Yes, Lord. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank God he's cool like that, right? Okay, 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 okay. So uh, verse 26. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they screamed out with fright. Ah! <laughs> that boy is dramatic. <laughs> but instantly, watch this. Instantly he spoke. Y'all see that? Instantly he spoke. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every time I get myself into some kind of trouble, Jesus is going to come and instantly he's going to speak just like the Holy Spirit is speaking right now. You know, y'all, we can change. I, I know we're, we're doing some good things, but we're, we're, we're too small, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that in the Holy Ghost. We're too small. We can rock the world for God. It's just not up to J David Jeremiah. It's just not up to T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar or Benny Hinn. Right here, we can rock the world if we become one. Quit, quit, do what you got to do. I don't care how deep you in. I'm a, I'm, I know, Lord, I'm going to leave that one alone. If we're going to do it, let's do it. But if you're not, again, don't get mad at those that go on. Because God will take them on. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, that thing just, whoo. I'm telling you this by the spirit of the living God. I'm telling you, I'm just trying to convey this thing, folks. So we got to decide what we're going to do. Because I don't want to invite and see all these people come and they leave worse off than what they came. And I've seen a lot of people come and go. And I've been here long enough. I can say this. I've seen a lot of people come and go. And they left here worse. Yes, because they were trying to get their hook up like everybody else in the house trying to get their hook up. And not even, not even thinking about, is this person going to hell? But they, they got that hook up, though. Not even concerned about their souls, just the hookup. Come, come on, come on over to the shield of faith so you can get your hookup. Word, don't don't like, don't don't play me like I don't know. Don't act like I don't know. I know. Believe me. I know well. It ain't no mystery. So I'm telling you. We better get it right. And there's something I, I, I but I said, Lord, not, the Lord told me, not, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. But we better be careful. We better be careful. Quit playing. Quit playing. Let's be about it. Because I'm telling you, folks, we can change the world. Excuse me, Mike. I believe it. We can literally change this world. We can literally change Charleston. What is that eruption going on in Hanahan, South Carolina? What, what is going on over there? 
People are getting saved. People are getting healed, filled with the Holy Ghost. The dead is raising the blind. It is possible. I believe it. I believe it, Will. But it ain't going to happen if we keep blocking. It's not, put that thing on the board, Rick, please, one more time. That picture. It's not going to happen if we continue to operate and function like this, church. I told you at the beginning of the year, a new year, a new ear, and a new heart. And I don't know, I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know if people or folks are listening. I, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And now the Lord told me, now the Lord gave me this. Step into the water. Because some folks ain't afraid to go out there. Because when you done come through hell and high water and you done seen the face of death and you seen hell itself and God delivered you from that devil like that, you ain't afraid of nobody or nothing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. And when you meet a person like that, it don't matter big. Sh- I, I tell you, one time I, had, I met a fellow man. He was from India. I think he was about this tall. I think I may have said this before. And he looked small in stature, but that dude was a giant in the Holy Ghost. I mean, he command tigers right face to face in the name of Bengal tigers? Yeah. <sighs> Lord, I ain't ready for that one yet, Lord. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, yeah, no snakes and no tigers, Lord. Yeah, just, 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 you know, help a brother, you know, give me some baby steps, you know. But he said he looked at cobras. He looked at Bengal tigers right in the face and command them in the name of Jesus to leave and they turn around and left. This, this fellow was no joke. Papa Sam. That's what we used to call him. Papa Sam. And that, that boy was bad. In the name of Jesus, I command you. Boy, that joker, that joker would go off in the Holy Ghost. Woo. I stand in the back and like, Lord, my goodness. So this is just part one of part one. <laughs> But we got a five-fold series, and I'm going to ask Pastor, let me, let, me, let me do what the Lord has put into my heart. And we'll figure out times and all that. But my question is, are you personally, individually ready to step into the water? You got, that, you got to ask yourself this series, and, and you know... Okay. I'll say this. I won't go too far into it, but I'll just say this. Just like Papa Sam, the Bible gave us an illustration of another fall, small fella of stature, and his name was Zacchaeus. You know what I loved about Zacchaeus? He wasn't afraid, but he was not small minded. He might have been small in stature, but he was not small minded. He said, I want to see Jesus. And he did whatever it took to see Jesus. And watch this. And because of his big mind and his and his big heart and and because of his desire to see the king in the kingdom, Jesus looked at him and says, and I'm coming to your house. Jesus noticed it. He took notice of his hunger. Blessed are those who (laughs) hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be what? Filled. Jesus takes notice of hunger. 